Welcome everyone. Now I'm going to show you how you can use Pi Mongo with Azure Cosmos DB. Couple of insert specific activities. So let me show you what I have done. What I have done is that I have created a new Cosmos DB. So when I created a new Cosmos DB in your Azure portal, one of the things you need to say what API does it support? So I choose the Cosmos DB for MongoDB API. That's the API I have selected and I created all of the details and then selected what version, uh, where version it need to support and I definitely chose the free version so that no cost incurred to that. So Cosmos DB is right now up and running. So you can see in my machine there is a, a Cosmos DB in my Azure portal and then you can see that I have created a couple of collection inside that one is book another is employees so on and so forth so if you want to create a collection in Cosmos DB what you basically need to do is that you need to give a name to the collection so for example if you want to um, talk about let's say cities that's a collection I want to create you can see that this is the database Oh, so I just need to use the existing database. So I'm not going to create a new database. So let me use the existing database. That's HRDB collection ID is cities. And then I just use the shared key, right? So maybe I say city ID. Okay. Uh, and then shard key is basically when you try to um, split that record. So maybe what you can do in the city, uh, you want to shard by country. Right? Let's use this country, the name of the country. Right? And then I say, okay. So what happens when you just have this collection created? The Cosmos DB account has a database and then it has a collection. So you have just created the collection within a database called HRDB. So you can see in the nice little data explorer which shows up in the Azure portal has got all the collections under that HRDB. So I've just now created this series, right? And then I'm gonna now in these cities we do not have any record right now at this point in time so if you go into documents you see no record but it is kind of indicated that country is your sharding key so let's see how we can insert a record into this collection. So the name is cities. So I'll go into my Visual Studio. I probably use the same code. So I have a MongoDB URL, which I'm connecting to have a database name. And this time I'll use cities. And here, instead of book, let's say I will add a new city. Okay, so I'll say new underscore city just to indicate that it is a new city and then in mongodb you have something called underscore id if you don't specify anything then some random value gets added to that so if i let's say specify the city with one and then i say the name of the city is let's say bangalore okay and then I also tell the country is India, okay? That's one record. So to insert any one record, you just need to say that you insert one and then you show the, the value over here. You read all of them using find, you just print them all, okay? Let's just try to run this and if I say that um, this is demo pi that's all right and we run the python code over here and they should show me the uh, 
Andre is misspelled, so N is missing. So let me try that again because it is the mandatory feed. So you now see that the record is now added. Now let me show you a tool called Cosmos DB Compass. I have provided that information. So I go, go to the documents and then say find. And uh, let's see if I have the record available. So yes, I have the record available, Bangalore, India. That's all fine. If I now go back and then let's say try to add a couple of more cities, okay? So if I say I instead of I'll say Chennai and okay, I just add the city number one and city number two. Now I can do this one and then I add another call two. So that's another way of doing it. Or what you can do, you can use a different insert method saying insert many. And here, what you can do, you can pass on the cities one by one. So you can say new city one and new city two. If you do that and then run the same code, it should now be able to add the records over there. You can also create the So there is some error over here. So let me just see what ex ah okay. So we kind of have the same ID. So let me just change the ID to something different because it is the fixed value and it's uniquely identified. So now we have three records. So you can see that now I'm able to insert multiple records one by one. Now let me just move, let's say, one record and try to add Kolkata. That's another Indian city. And this time what I'm going to do is that not only insert the record, but also try to find uh, the ID. So if I say that, not many, but one, I'll say insert one. And then I use the method called what is the inserted ID. So once when you insert a record, right, you need to make sure that they are uniquely identifiable, right? So you just use insert head. It should actually show up here because I'm using, it. but anyways, I'll say insert head ID. That's the ID which got inserted. So in this case, I have inserted one, two, three. So let's use four. So I say new underscore ID. That's the newly inserted ID. And I'll print that ID. That's new underscore ID. Okay. So you can see that. Now, not only I'm printing all of them. So let me just remove this. I'll just print the ID. If I print the ID, just the ID, and I run this code, okay, that's why it was not showing. So I have got a leftover over here, and then I just enter this, and you will see that the newly inserted ID that is 4 will show up because I have mentioned that. Now imagine that I don't pass any value into the ID field because this is a system generated one. And let me choose another city called New Delhi. And then if I run this code, you will find that there is a random value, a longer one, which will appear, which basically uniquely identifies. Uh, the record. So if I don't pass on anything, then you will see that value. For example, now if I continue to add this thing, it will not throw me an error because it now every time it will have the different ID. And as compared to the previous one where it was adding the same ID, trying to add the same ID, 
but not able to do that. So let me say for C in um, my collection dot find and then let's say I want to find all and then print them one by one C dot just print the C and I don't want to let's say enter the new record but I want to just display them over here in my um, terminal window you will find that I have got two uh, new Delhi uh, with two different IDs which are system generated because I did not pass the value of ID if I go into my MongoDB compass and then I say refresh now instead of one record there'll be six records you can see that now it, they are all showing up over here in this list so they are basically working fine so this is connected to cosmos db that's the url you can see and then we have got one replica set for the cluster and this is the version edition it is using that is mongodb 3.6 community edition all right, so with this, we have explored a bit more in the um, insert part of the story, right? And you could actually uh, capture uh, the newly inserted ID immediately, just immediately after the insert is done, which is quite helpful in many different scenarios where you can really find what exactly happened over there, what is the ID, and I can even display the record which is now stored in the database with that specific ID, right? So which basically tells you about the record and it's automatically inserted ID. If you, let's say, <clears throat> have an ID which is important for you to store um, in the child record, right? If you are creating another document uh, in another collection, and then you want to refer this ID, just like a relational database, uh, you can always retrieve that ID immediately after the insert is happened in, and then uh, use that ID to, to insert another record in another collection, right? So that could be one of the use cases. So with this, I want to thank you for watching and hope this was helpful.